So we teach you NEPQ and what type yeah. of, once you started really applying it to your sales calls, how did your prospects start to react to you compared to how they reacted to you before? Yeah, I remember my first time that I implemented NEPQ and the first thing the person said was, dude, you didn't even try to sell me. Like it was such an easy conversation. I remember it very clearly. Yeah. And at that time I was like, oh my gosh, this actually works. I don't have to push. I can just ask questions and listen and use my vocal language and my body language to actually influence behavior. And I've yeah. never done that before. And it was very powerful That's for me. Especially when he said they said, oh my gosh, you didn't even sell me, but they bought. That's yes. the key. When your prospects, the moment they feel that you are trying to close them, that you are trying to sell them, is the moment they start to emotionally shut down. So even if you ask questions, they're never going to open up to those. They're going to cut you off and say, hey, can you just get to the point? I'm a straight shooter. Just tell me what it's going to cost. That's what they're going to do because you triggered it by what you're saying to them in the beginning of the call. You're not, you don't know how to disarm them from the beginning of the call to the middle of the call to the end to maybe it's a two call close or maybe you're in a B2B complex sound environment and it's a three month close or six month close. You don't know the questions to ask to disarm them the entire time where they want to engage and where they want to emotionally yeah. open up. And that's where the sales made. So you started noticing people were opening up to you. Yeah, because the first thing I would ask, and you're familiar with this frame is, you know, at the, the beginning of this call, you're going to do, you know, we don't do maybes. It's either a yes or a no. Literally, that's what I was using all of you last would use year. To say right. that. Who taught you how to say 100%. that? Immediately, you know, triggered sales resistance. And I didn't understand that. And so I started training with, with NAPQ, you and Matt. Yeah. The, how important this was. And it it literally diffuses everything by just being myself, having the framework and being able to be myself, have the framework inside of a conversation, but asking the right questions. And Patrick's not saying you get on the your call or your meeting and say, hi, how are you? Oh, is that a picture of your kids? I've got four kids too. Oh my gosh. No, he's not talking about that. That does not build trust. In fact, that annoys your prospects because they know you're not genuine. Okay. So yep. when you start off even an aggressive frame, like he was saying, like he was taught before from other sales trainers, gurus, like, Hey, we don't do maybes here. It's either a yes or no, or you're in or you're out. What immediately goes through a prospect's mind? This person's here to sell me something and they're never going to emotionally open up. You literally are triggering sales resistance. You are literally causing them to have objections throughout that call. Oh, just makes me sad. I can't believe people even teach that anymore. It's crazy. So you learn the right questions from the beginning. You might, and then we change the frame. Okay. So really the first part of this call is really more for us to find out more about your background. And, and I'll just do it with what you sell to really find out more about your background and, and kind of, you know, what you're doing now business wise. And then I would say really what you're looking for to see if we could actually help. Cause there's some people where, you know, there's just not much we can do for them. You know what I mean by that? Oh yeah, I know. See that frame triggers them to start to open up because I've admitted we might not even be able to help you. And when they feel that we're not biased, we don't know yet because we don't know anything about their situation. They open up instead of closing down emotionally. What are right. your thoughts on that? One of the things significantly that you, I learned from you and FEPQ was is to like pretty much in the, especially in the beginning is to be skeptical, unsure. Yeah. Right. Not, not really sure. And curious. I, most of my call until we, if I can actually help them goes into just curiosity. I'm just yeah. curious. Yeah. Like, and I had never done that before, but it is so powerful and it, yeah. it makes me at ease and I can stay grounded, calm, cool, and collective. Yeah. And be myself and just yeah. ask the questions from curiosity. And it works. 100 yeah, Remember, time. you're at the event here three, four weeks ago here in Arizona. And we, I was talking about you have to you have to come across like you're the confused old man. Now, if you're female, <laughs> you're the confused old woman. You're going into the yeah. gas station. It's like you're this confused old guy. You know, everybody knows what I'm talking about. Your GPS doesn't work. You don't know how to do your phone GPS. You walk in like you're lost. Like, can somebody help me? Everybody wants to help. You're the confused old man. And when you're the confused old man in the beginning, not in a way that you're not an expert, but in a way that disarms them, people start to pull you in. Okay. Mm -hmm. And when they pull you in, 
they are emotionally invested in what you're offering. That's a big deal. What are some other things you noticed as you started to use NEPQ that were completely different compared to the way you used to sell? Yeah, I would say, uh, I think um, the consequence questions. I, yeah. I never actually used consequence questions. And I never, when I started getting deeper into advanced training with Matt and, and the team, yeah. I got into actually adding metaphors in the consequence questions, metaphors inside there. But I had to learn the structure first. But that consequent question really allowed me to understand what drives the person to get them to act by yeah. evoking the pain. Yeah. And when I started doing that, I would I wouldn't move on until I really got clear on what the cost is if they don't change. Um, us, and it's so us, powerful. Give us an, yeah, give us an example. I think everybody wants to hear. Give us an example with what you sell. Uh, what a concept. What that consequence question would be. Just like your role play. I'm your prospect. Like how would that look? Sure. So, uh, what, what happens if, if if like what are the ramifications if if you if you didn't actually put a streamlined a process in place to to streamline the marketing for your gym. Like what happens, it, like what, what are the day-to-day -day ramifications if, if you don't do something about it now? Yeah, and that triggers them to do what? Open up and tell you what happens if they don't change. And more importantly, they're telling who what happens if they don't change. Yeah. They're telling themselves. So, yeah. So do you see how that question, so that question has to be asked at the right time though. You can't just get on a call and like two minutes later, like, well, what happens if you don't like th no. that? There's no trust there. There's no credibility yet. Right. Consequence right. questions come after you help them find out their current situation. We call that their current state. We're able to help. Those are, cur those are situation questions. We're able to help them find the gap. The gap are questions or what are called problem awareness questions that allow them to see what their real problems are. Cause most prospects don't even know what the real problems are when you first get on the phone with them or on Zoom or in a meeting, wherever, okay? Then we're going to ask what are called solution awareness questions that get them to see right here what their future is going to look like once all of these problems are actually solved. We call that their objective state, like their objective, where they want to be. Now, once they feel what it's going to be like, once all these problems are solved, you rip that away with the consequence question that forces yeah. them psychologically to defend themselves on why they have to change their situation now not later, which eliminates probably 70 to 75% of your objections. Like, I want to think it over. Now's not a good time. Those just get eliminated because they can't, yeah. they can't psychologically go back and say that when they say, oh my gosh, it's important. I've got to do this now because of X and Y and Z. They don't come back right. 10 minutes later and say, well, now it's not a good time. I think I'll come back to this maybe in six months. They can't. Yeah. So that's the thing I was missing was I would just go from problem to to here we can solve it but now that piece alone so what i'll do and just like you share with me is i will get to them to a future state i have a future pace just imagine you know and, and i would get it attached to a tangible something specific maybe it's a house maybe it's something specific that they want it's travel uh, and i'll attach the emotion behind it and get them to feel and experience it and then i'll just rip it away like you said and what happens if you 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 don't actually get that yeah. like what happens if you don't actually streamline this process to actually allow so yourself what, what to are you going to do if you don't okay but what happens if you don't do anything about this you don't steam right. with what you sell you don't streamline the process and your company keeps stagnating the next three six or even 12 months from now see that skepticism the skeptical look because then that triggers them that most people are like oh no i'm going to do something about it for sure okay but what happens if you don't though well, if mm. I know it's going to happen this and this, well, are you, are you willing to settle for that? No, no, I'm going to do something for sure. It's impossible for them to come back at the end and say, I need to think it over. Yeah. And that, what you just said right there, I mean, I just did it an hour ago and I just sold, sold a deal, but it's really just like, are, are you willing to, to settle for that? Are, are you, are you sure? Cause you don't have to change. You don't have to do anything different. Well, what, why is it important to you now though? Yeah. Right, really getting them engaged so they're telling you why like, they want to change. And that was something I never did before. And it's it's very important in the sales process. How much how much volume did you sell last month? Volume for yeah. the one account? Yeah, just yeah, I think you did like three million in sales, right? I did. So I was there at the sniper retreat and one day I closed seven out of seven. And you know, I think because being in that environment really helped a lot because yeah. I've never done a hundred percent close day, seven yeah. out of seven particularly. 
Yeah. Uh, and I did, I think, I think, uh, just in, just in contract value, uh, 800,000 or something like that, but 3 million with this account, right? Yeah, three, uh, over three, the, over three million dollars last just month. One month. Yeah. yeah. Just, just one month, you know, which, which definitely takes him well over 50,000 a month in commissions for sure. And the great thing about Patrick is, you know, and sometimes it just happens, you know, sometimes we get clients and then down the road, they're just like, Hey, can we come work for you guys? And if it's not a conflict of, uh, of interest, then, you know, unless, you know, if they're already, if they're people they work for as a client, that could be a conflict of interest. We wouldn't do that. But if they're coming from an outside company and they, and they want to do that, sometimes it happens. So Patrick, when did you come on board with this? Was it a year ago? I don't remember. Exactly a year ago. Yeah. Yeah. About a year, a year ago. ago. So now you're actually on the team. You got to hold up the watch that we just bought you. Okay. So we just, bought, we just bought Patrick a Breitling watch. See mine? I just got this a couple weeks ago. Nice. I like I got it. This, I got this with James. I was uh, so James, our COO, uh, came up with me to Vegas because I was on a, the Dave Meltzer podcast show at the Wind Studio. And like 15 minutes before we walk in, we're like walking down in the wind, in the wind, uh, <laughs> in the wind. So we're walking down in the wind. They have all these shops here, Louis Vuitton. And there's a freaking Breitling store, like literally like 50 feet away from the podcast. So the, the Wind Studio has this massive podcast place. They spent like $5 million on it. It's insane. I've never seen a podcast studio like this. I've been in Bradley's podcast, which is probably at least a million or two million itself. But this one's like five million. It yeah. was like decked out crazy. And so right next to it was a Breitling store. And so like 15 minutes before I go on, I'm like, man, I figured I need a new Brightly. And I had it, I had an older <laughs> Brightly on. So I ran in there. I'm like, oh my gosh, I love that Brightly. I freaking bought it. Like put it up, jumped in the podcast. So yeah, I, we got to get you this Brightly. How do you like the Brightly? I love it. I love it. It, it okay. um, one thing I learned about being, you know, on sales is I, I've started to wear nicer clothes, nicer background, nicer watch. And I'm, I'm just noticing it, it makes me feel different on my calls. Yeah. Yeah. That has been huge for me. So having this watch makes me, it, it raises my own identity, my own status, right? And so I, I love it. It, it helps yeah. helps me for sure continue yeah. building that conviction and confidence on my calls. Yeah, yeah. we get we get uh, top salespeople in different internal accounts. We get them brightenings all the time. It's like the big thing yeah. here in the company is like, do you have the brightening watch? You got to get the sales <laughs> watch. So I wanted to congratulate you on that. Um, Thanks, man. Any, any last words? of advice that you would give to our listeners. I know that you, you know, you're an internal yeah. single person for us now. You I mean, you're making yep. 40, 50 grand a month in commissions. I, I have to ask. Okay. I know, you know, you have a girlfriend. Are we on, I always, I always know for doing our job training wise, if the client or even one of somebody that works on our internal sales team, if the wife or I guess the husband, different cases, or, you know, or the girlfriend or whatever, girlfriend, boyfriend, wife, husband, are we, do they like us? Like, are we on, are we, are they one of our fans? Oh my God. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> no doubt in my mind. But I think more importantly, my kids are my fans. Cause I'm able, look, I was at a point, you know, two years ago where I, I couldn't pay for gas. Like my, I had, I, you know, deep wound stories of just going through divorce, all that jazz. And so yeah. now I've turn, turned everything around turned my finances around. And this yeah. has been one of the catalysts of it because of NABQ. But more importantly, I'm able to actually, you know, take care of my kids. Yeah. And, well, I, you, and I, I really mean, didn't have the financial funds to do that before. Yeah. Uh, and that's, and a crazy, that's a crazy thing. You know, like when you have the skill level, even when shit hits the fan, because we're all going to go through trials and tribulations. That's just part of this life. I mean, that God puts us through trials yeah. and tribulations. Most of them are self-induced by us, but you're going to go through yeah. trials and tribulations like divorce and just other things. But when you learn, when you have the right sales skills and the ability, that stuff is doesn't affect you as much. I mean, can you imagine like going through all that where you'd be at right now if you didn't have the sales skills you have now, the income you're making now? Yeah, it is, it is impossible. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You'd be in a world of hurt. I know. So, so one thing I'll share because I think this is important for anybody. Like, there's different levels of, of salespeople. Like, a lot of people have experience or they've trained with all these other people, and maybe they're doing ten thousand, fifteen thousand, whatever a month. But there's always another level. And I always knew there's another level for me. And so for anyone that's watching this right now that isn't sure um, about that next level, the most important thing that I have done, especially with being on the team with you, is um, working with someone above you yeah. that, that, that has that skill level that you don't have, that you can, you can model. Modeling success, modeling behavior, 
but it requires you to do something different and get into a different program, obviously NAPQ, because without it, you know, I would not be where I am today. And I know that for sure. So that would be the one thing I would tell people, even if you think you're good, there's great. If you think you're great, there's remarkable. If you think there's a, you're good at remarkable, there's extraordinary. Like there's another level of me that I'm still literally dissecting my own sales process and listening to my calls because there's more levels to me. So if you're watching this, like I'm telling you, there's more levels to you and go get the help you need and and yeah. just just take advantage of whatever Jeremy has to offer. Absolutely well, like I, know like that. we always say, what's gotten you here, how's it going to get you to here? Can't. You have to increase your skill level. If you're a newer salesperson who's just starting, why not have the right scale skills from the very first time rather than learning it the wrong way, going through trial and error and beating yourself in the head when there's a yeah. way you can just start right here. You know, that's that's always the thing. You know, I was on with a client, one of our corporate accounts, huge company out of London, out of London. I mean, they do a couple hundred million dollars a year in sales and they just brought us on a while ago. And I was on with some of their sales managers and, and one of them, I, he's great. He actually does really well, makes a couple hundred thousand a year. Um, and, and, you know, he was giving me pushback when we were writing scripts, like, oh, I'm not sure if we should use that and this. And I'm just like, well, you just have to ask yourself, has what got, what's gotten your company to this? Yeah. How are you going to get to here by doing the same thing? And they're just like, oh, that's the reason why we hired you yeah. to go from here to here. Okay. I will listen. So sometimes we get so entrenched with the way we sell because we feel it's like golf. I always, I always compare selling to golf salespeople, like especially salespeople that make low six figures have the biggest egos. It's like, I know everything about selling. I make 10 grand, 12, 15 grand a month. There's nothing else I can know. Like I'm the best of all in the world. I am Zeus. Right. And it's like golf. Like, they, they hit all these bad shots, but then they just hit that one hole that's really good. They're like, oh, I'm so awesome in golf. I'm so good. No, you, I mean, you're not good. You're okay. Okay. But if you want to go from here to get to here, you have to level up your skills. Seventh level. You have to level up your skills. Yep. If you want to play in the big boy club, the big girl club, you got to have better skill level if you want to make that type of money like our clients do for sure. Patrick, and, for, and if, I don't, if you don't mind, I put it out is then once you have the skill, it's important to have someone to tell you what's working and not working with that and give you feedback. Feedback has been the most extraordinary thing that I have learned. And I still get feedback, right? Yeah. Of listening to my calls or role playing. And it's, it's really about swallowing the ego and just being open to actually getting feedback because that is only when you actually can make changes. Yeah, you can't get better if you're stuck in, in your way of thinking where you think you're so awesome that you can't learn. You'll never increase right. your income or sales if you can't learn. I, I, I still learn. For like sure. I learn, okay? Uh, NEPQ keeps getting better every week, every month, every year. It's ever learning. You know, like Bradley, good friend of mine. Uh, dropping, you know, dropping bombs, podcasts, always says it's training something you did or is training something you do. Well, if you want to be great as a sales professional, if you're a business owner and you want your salespeople to be great, so you make a lot more sales, training is something they have to do every single day. Otherwise, they stagnate and start going down, right? It's just the way it is. And I think the biggest difference, because people always ask me, like, what's the difference between NEPQ 2.0 training, NEPQ 3.0 advanced inner circle? Well, it's levels. Here you are right now. NEPQ 2.0 is going to take you here because you're going to get access to the portal. NEPQ 3.0 Advanced is going to take you to here because you have access to the portal plus twice as much content in the portal, like 23 hours now or something like that, plus all the group training from our sales trainers that teach you advanced objection handling. They teach you advanced tonality. Then when you go to the advanced inner circle, then you go up to here because now you're being trained by all that portal training plus more portal training, more advanced tonality, more advanced objection handling plus more advanced training calls with me, with Matt, our CEO, and Marco Cortese, our chief revenue officer, okay? All three were seven-figure earners as sales professionals, commission only, okay? And that's where you get really advanced, advanced. So the difference is, like you said, when somebody is there breaking down your calls and they can hear what's going on and they can hear what you're doing right and what you're doing wrong and what you need to change, and when you make those changes, well, you start making a lot more sales. The only reason why you're not making the sales you want now is because you're there's something you're saying. There's 
certain questions you're not asking that's triggering the prospect to run the other way and not buy. And when you have somebody that has that skill level that you want to be at, analyze and break that down and show you exactly what to say, show you exactly what to ask, and you do it, you get the same result. So I wanted to congratulate you on taking our advice. And because you could have said like, man, I'm 10, 15 grand a month. I, that's all I need to make ever. Yeah. But because you didn't, because you lowered the ego or whatever, you went up to 40 and 50 grand a month in commissions. And the good thing is a year from now, you'll be making more than that. Yeah. I, I, I didn't even know there was another level of my own skills until I had someone listen to my call. I told you, Matt, Matt, listen to my call last year. I would not have known if he did not do that call review, that there's another level of my own skill. Yeah. So absolutely. 100%. All right, Patrick, thanks. Stay warm there in Connecticut. Hope that helps everybody. Now, everybody listening, if you want to learn more details about how we can help you sell a lot more of your products and services than you are now. Folks, we have, we just counted yesterday, 4,348 testimonials. 4,348 testimonials in the last 28 months. There is a reason why we have more than any other sales training company on the planet, according to everybody else. Human behavior works every time. If you learn the right questions and the right structure like Patrick has, you can write your ticket and go anywhere else. So if you want to learn some of those skills, you want to know what your options are to work with us so you can have the same skills that Patrick's talking about, the same financial security he has, in the comments section, post hashtag NEPQ, post hashtag NEPQ. We won't you know, beat you up if you spell it wrong. Either myself, Matt Ryder, our CEO, or Marco Cortese, our CEO, will message you more details to go over some different options to see if we can help you as well. Patrick, well done. We have a wonderful Christmas. If I don't talk to you before that, um, thank you. Happy New Year. I guess you'll probably be back out here in January or February, anyways. I think we're going to bring you guys out in Janu late January. I think so. Absolutely. Yeah. Look, look forward to it, man. We'll hit some you'll crosses. Wearing, you'll go from wearing that, yeah. wearing short sleeves in January right. in Phoenix. I know. I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward. To it. Talk to you soon. Patrick, you're awesome. See you soon, brother. Thanks, man. See you. Hey, guys, if you enjoy these, here's another you can watch right over here, right over here. Join our free sales revolution group. Click the link below. Join us and we're going to help you. Thanks for watching. We'll see you real soon.